Hey guys, all right, so when we're talking about positional asphyxia, what this means is, is we're impeding the, the breathing process of the subject that you're on top of. So it doesn't matter if you're an officer or in the civilian aspect. If we're looking at it from the civilian aspect and maybe I'm trying to control the subject that just uh, assaulted me and I'm waiting for police response until they can come in and arrest them, or from the law enforcement perspective, um, we really negate the positional asphyxia uh, situation because we have the ability to throttle how much pressure we want depending on how much the subject is resisting. At the end of the day, if I really feel like that I can't control this guy, uh, he might be on you know, some controlled substances or alcohol or mental health issues, and if I find that moment to be able to disengage and either create time and space uh, or either go to a use of force option as an officer, um, then at least I've, I've given myself an option. So that's, that's that thing where you just have to be cognizant of I am gonna hold this person down is that I'm not, I'm staying here for a long period of time. So if he's addressing the fact that he can't breathe, then start thinking about he can't breathe. Do I wanna let off the pressure? And can I find that moment in time to create that time and space? All right, squad, so one last tip here, if we can stay here, Chris. Uh, when he has that foot on the mat, we talked about that that foot on the mat transfers the pressure. The way that he's going to relieve that pressure, or add the pressure, regulate that pressure, shifting the weight more to the knee or more to the foot, all right? All these details put together will put you in a winning position. So with the squad here, we have, once again, Chris Van Digma, Buck Grant, Killer B, and we're out. <laughs> What's going on in the world today? Stuff like that needs to be heard. Yeah, that was an important. Thing. That was an important. That's just an important factor because, like, now when you talk, start talking about defund the police, it's like maybe you should fund the police and just so teach them the stuff like this. Yes. yes. <laughs> Seriously. You know. I mean, not getting into it off the off the topic a little bit, but um, you know, you talk about what, why funding the police is going to solve the problems that we may be seeing right now rather than the, the, the uh, vice versa. Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna call a quick time out here just to explain to you exactly who these people are. This guy was a full-time SWAT operator who maintains reserve status. He was an academy instructor as well as a patrol officer. He now travels the world working with special and regular force military and law enforcement specializing in close quarter engagements. This guy is a national use of force instructor, a federal law enforcement professional, and a defensive tactics instructor based in Canada's capital city of Ottawa. This guy is a former professional MMA fighter turned coach. He's an Ajahn in Muay Thai, a black belt in Jiu Jitsu, and is currently a government contractor teaching tier one operators empty hand combatants. And finally, this guy is also a Muay Thai coach, also a black belt in Jiu Jitsu, a firearms instructor, and is a former Navy SEAL. Aside from their professional careers, they are good people, community leaders, and responsible citizens of their respective countries. Let's move forward. Uh, and, it's, and it begins with recruitment. You know, it's like if, if officers are given a decent wage, I'm going to get a bigger hiring pool. More people are going to apply for that job. And so now I'm getting a, a larger hiring pool and, and hiring a higher caliber of individual to begin with mm. to form into a police officer. Mm. So from the very get-go, it takes funds to create a good job with decent benefits so that I'm getting more people applying for that job. And now in my initial training, you know, how long can I keep these guys in training in the academy? Some, mm. some departments like, we got to get these guys out on the street. We're going to cut off this and that and that. And we're going to cut, mm. cut training out, right? Now you're getting guys out on the street because of funding issues that are not trained from, the, from out, out of the gate. Now they continue training, right? Let's keep these guys getting additional training so they stay trained because we know a lot of this is perishable skills. And that takes funds, right? Mm. Because I got to pay for experts like yourselves to come in and give these guys the training that they need. And staffing, if I got to take guys off the street to put them in training, I got to have enough manpower in my department to keep the streets policed while I'm rotating guys into training. Mm -hmm. And that takes funds, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, really to, to, to get a more professional police force out there, we need funds out of the gate and then continued for people to, to maintain that high level of training throughout their uh, police careers. I like that whole idea of like screening too, you know, like if, if it's better paid, but it's also the training is a bit more rigorous. Like we know in martial arts communities, if you have good training, it tends to weed out 
horrible people. Yeah. You know, horrible people, bullies don't stick around in a martial arts environment yeah. where they're getting choked True out story. on the day-to-day -day basis, True right? Story, yeah. So, you yeah. know, having that type of mindset. Yeah, absolutely. The whole training process, um, you know, the longer you can put them through those processes from the academy to field training, uh, FTO, um, that, those whole processes should be able, you, know, sh you should be able to keep people that are going to make good officers in the job and people that it's not for them should be weeded out in that whole process also. And again, these things take, um, they do take funds, you know, the, the more, the, the, when you take funds away from, from departments now, you just like get them trained, do cut off that, cut that and get them on the street as quickly as we can. And, and we don't have the resources to keep them trained. And so, and then problems start to creep in, um, to the departments and, and again, uh, with the lower funds are uh, for law enforcement, I see this around the world in the different mm. countries I go into, that creates an environment for corruption mm. you know, mm. because people, um, you know, they just don't make a living wage and mm. they're looking for other ways to make ends meet mm. and it creates another environment that mm. again, creates more issues. So. Yeah. Same problem in the hood, man. Right, right. <laughs> if you don't make enough money, you find a way to make money. You're going right. to do what you got to do. Yeah. And people, they, we we're not suggesting to have a police state. That's one end of the spectrum, but you also don't want a feudal environment where there's nobody to to enforce and protect yeah. your your civil liberties that's that's a, tra a travesty too absolutely there's a balance there you know like in, in the in, here in the states you know we you know, people we, when i talk to people from other countries like germany like yeah how long is your academy oh is that three years like oh it's, i was just three months you know <laughs> so, wow. and so you know you, you don't you, and so yeah <laughs> it's different it's a staunch um, difference yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a big difference and it, it makes for uh, you know here and the way things work in the U.S. and there's, there's some argument too that most of your learning happens on the street, and there's, mm. there's a lot of truth to that. You know, you go, you spend a lot of time with books and stuff, and and then you spend one week on the street, and I learn more then than I did. You know, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there's got to be uh, that balance of you know um, of actually get, uh, building a high level of professionalism um, and training, and in particular with the use of force, right? right? Because mm. that's what we do as use of force instructors, and use of force as usually the highest, well, the highest li liability for law enforcement in this country is failure to train, hmm. failure to tr provide officers the training that they need. Hmm. Now officers are doing things that they shouldn't be doing, but it falls back on the department because the department didn't give them the training that hmm. they needed to actually do a better job. Hmm. And so, yeah. Okay, guys, that's it for now, but I want to make something clear. This post, and especially in the commentary, is not about bashing law enforcement. This is not the solution. It is part of a multi-layered solution. And I hope we can continue to discuss this in a civilized manner in the commentary below. As always, I really want to thank the people in our community who enjoy watching these kinds of videos. You are the core, you are the foundation of the audience that we want to reach. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much for partaking in this very important dialogue, this conversation. And I really look forward to reading your comments below. Thank you very much. My name is Gian. Thanks again for watching Funker Tactical. We'll see you next time. <laughs>